Good evening, peoples, brews, targeted wealth creation at you for MISTI and MSTR. Uh, hey, a couple of things. Uh, if you noticed, I hadn't been doing as many videos. I had a little medical procedure done this week. Uh, I'm okay, um, but it was a little painful and I'm a little bit slowed down. And uh, I'm going to increase my volume by this weekend and into next week. But so here's catching up on Misty and MSTR. Okay, so look at this yo yo here. We're on Tuesday, 133. We go to 141, so we blow by our 138 and 13850. And look, we got the bulk at 138. I'm like, oh no. And then we turn around and go back. Now, you would think with one trading day to go for the weekly close, we'd be sufficiently low, but we really aren't, right? I mean, we're, we're into the money and making it, but these option guys are keeping the premium high. So it didn't even reach the 80% gain, which, you know, again, these are high IVs, but relative to its historical IV, it's not that high. So I'm going to jump in and cover all of this. Um, so what did they do yesterday? Well, they had more shares bought in, right? We went up just a simple 75 from um, Tuesday to Wednesday, and then Wednesday to Thursday, we went up 250,000 shares. So they did go out and deploy the following. So on Misty, we have a 139, and we've been in that 139 for a while. Not super long, went from a 155 to a 139, but a week or more. So now that we're below it on the 133-ish, whatever time of the day they wrote this, they're able to get a little bit more. When you're even, calls are almost always more expensive in the marketplace. So if you're looking at selling a 139 when the stock, the underlying is trading at 139, you're going to pay more for the calls than selling the puts. But since we're $6 below it, I'm surprised this is as, as close. I don't know if they... You know, they probably didn't want to open another synthetic, but look at coin. It's got three different synthetics. Um, so this is only 50 cents. So that's a little shocking to me that it's not skewed more. But OK, it is what it is. So this is a traditional add more because people bought shares. So they bought 330 contracts at 17.2 and they sold 330 contracts at 17.72. So we're making 50 cents more, 52 cents more on every contract. And then what did they do? They went out next week. Because obviously on Thursday, you're not going to write a Friday. Went out to 830 and they sold a 148. So it seems big, like, well, from 133, it's, you know, 15, it's over 10%. But in the scheme of things, with six trading drays in crypto, that's not very much, anyhow. But I'm not faulting them. They got $2.42. It's fine. Don't have any issue with that one. Okay. So let's go look at the synthetic. So that put a small amount of money in our pocket, okay? Here we are on 822, 330, 1720, as I said, 1772. So it's the difference here. It's like $17,160. It's dinky, dinky, dinky. This was like 1396, right? 1,396,000. But hey, a gain is a gain. This isn't going to, I don't worry anymore. I used to try to keep these all perfectly updated, but they don't participate in any calculation. It's all over in holdings and everything else that matters. This up here matters, and these numbers down here, because this is what I read in my payout sheet. Okay, so we gained a little bit. Okay, so we also wrote this. We gained a little bit, 79,000, right? We went out and wrote 330 contracts. They're at a different color because they represent a different week. Okay, 
I like to differentiate that. And here I can just go back. These aren't even relevant and make them all white again. Whoops, got to make it white on the text color and not the background color. Okay. So uh, let's go look at weeklies and see how we are distributed, right? So on the weeklies, we've added 330. Let's look how close we are. So fine, those guys are a different color. They're 10.6. Remember I said it, it looks significant. A lot's going to tell us today. Now with this many contracts, peoples, we do not want to go over 138. So the perfect scenario is we go up to 137.90 or if we open and we hang around 135, 134, and we get through midday, fund manager, please take it off, okay? I don't care if it's 20 cents, 14 cents. Don't risk this thing going into the closing, going up to 138.50. You lose all of that money, all of that income, okay? So... Well, I shouldn't say that. You don't lose all of it, but you start losing it very quickly, right? I, I, I take that back. At 138, you keep everything. Yeah, you pay, well, you're going to pay 10, 11 cents, but take it off the table when you can. Don't take any risk, all right? So that's the total amount of contracts. That's three, four, and three. I mean, this guy's pretty safe, but do we care? At 630 contracts, not very much. This guy's a little safer than the 138, but that's less than 2,000. This is 30,000, right? So this is the only one in my mind that really matters, and you can see it. Let's go over to holding. So it is seven, call it eight million, right? So at the close of yesterday, with it at 133, five dollars well, four dollars and change away, they're saying it has a value of a dollar thirty-three. So they're doing that to kind of get you with people like this. You remember, these guys are big volume traders. So they'd rather win on the big volume trader than they would on the little volume guy. So you know, you could have taken this off the table, but what did you really take off the table? You don't have to. It's it's you could, you'd still have to pay 42, and hopefully it, this thing they buy back for a penny, and this guy they buy back for a nickel, and this guy they buy back for 10 cents. We just don't want it going over 138 because it starts taking money out of this. At 138, they keep the 8 million. Okay, 7 million, 700,000. All right, you, you get my drift. All right, so let's take a look. How's our synthetic? Well, obviously we went down. So I charted this out very carefully. And look at this. So this is when we were around 133. Then we jumped up to almost 141. And so, wow, we had a profit. Why? Because we're over the synthetic strike price. And then we drop back to 133. So it's not quite as much premium, time premium left. So that's why these vary a little bit and we're probably higher in the 133 number. You can go back, yeah, this was 133.69 and this 133.81 and this had three days of trading and this had one. So that's roughly why that synthetic gets like that, okay? Just another education point. So what do I think about all this? Let's, let's finish on the holding. So we closed at 23.98. Fair value is 23.89. Okay, so we're nine cents expensive. Um, and this is something I've added a little while ago. I've tried to say, okay, when we're under, what's that money relative to how many shares? So if we had to close that tomorrow, we'd take a further 61 cent hit. But guess what? We get up to 138 and we buy that back, then this has already wiped out that loss. I mean, you gotta remember up at 140, this gives us a 12 million. So they can get there, but hopefully that explains to you guys this dynamic that you're threading the needle, the yin and yang. You want it a certain way for your weeklies, and then 
if you didn't have weeklies at all, then you're essentially long stock, right? This synthetic is they sold a put, that's bullish bet, and they bought a call, that's a bullish bet. So you want this thing to go up in theory 10, 15% every week. And that's exactly what you're going to gain, okay? And then that's what Misty's going to gain. But it, since this is an income fund, they target getting, like, like take this for instance, and I don't know other people do this. If you want a 50% yield, right? So you say, oh, well, there's 52 weeks. If I'm writing weekly calls, I want a 1% yield a week. And you can go out and calculate what the price of everything is to figure how much you need to get a 1% yield. So they're logically thinking. That's why I talk about the script thing sometimes. They're so busy doing that and trying to figure the placement of where they're going to write that they stop trading. They're, and they'll say, well, Bruce, we're, we're not in the trading business. We're not trying to anticipate the market. Well then maybe somebody else will create a fund that does that because I'm telling you the one thing when I got into options and I would go out in a stock two months out and you know, let's say I just wrote a simple covered call, bought a $10 stock, it went to 13. Now what I'm saying is I don't know that it's going to stay here at 13. It may go back to 11 or 10, but I'm kind of bullish long term. So Somebody writing a cover call says it's at 13. I'm going to go out and write a 14 two months out further, and I'm going to collect that income. Well, what is my liability? What's the downside? Because I sold that call. Well, I have an obligation to give it to the market maker if it's 14 or above. He doesn't want it. He can't take it from me under 14. I sold a 14 call. So if it stays at 1398, he's not going to buy it. Okay? But if it goes above 14, it's 1450, he's going to go buy it from me for 14. But I sold it. I didn't tell you how much premium, right? But that's the idea. So that's how these markets, but what happens when you do that after a while, you start becoming a covered call writer. You start watching the trading. You're like, "Wow, that call was worth $2. Now that call's $1.20. Now it's back to $1.90. And you go, well, maybe I'm just going to trade the option, right? So it's interesting because the big thing with Yomax is they write a prospectus and they say, we're going to do single stock ETF, income-oriented ETFs. And they tell the SEC, we're going to accomplish that because... No ETF can own a single stock and have more ten, than 10% 10 of all their funds in that single stock. That's not the definition of an ETF. An ETF is more meant to be more safer, more secure by holding a bunch of stocks. Okay, But the way around that is you never buy the underlying stock. You go long that stock through a series of, of options. So you're never really owning the stock. So it's a way around that technique or that restriction. But they're rethinking it at yield max a little bit, saying, well, this is okay. This still can produce good results. But people that don't like the NAV erosion, they love the high yield, but they hate the NAV erosion that if it runs long enough over time, it will have some, likely have some NAV erosion. The exception would be you find a stock that goes up 5% or less every week, but it's always slowly going up for multiple, multiple years. That would be the perfect candidate for this kind of a income fund. You would never have NAV reduction because your synthetic is always making some money and you're winning 99% of the time on your, your weeklies. And it's moving up enough over time that the volatility is reasonable so they're collecting a decent amount of money because the IV is high, the implied volatility. So there's a lot of things here, and I'm gonna get finished Misty, but I thought I would use this as an education thing for people. So in my thoughts, a yield max, and if they don't do it, somebody else should. 
Okay, I know what they're trying to do now. They're trying to move to the uh, spread method and TSMY based on um, Taiwan Semiconductor, which is a fabulous company. Okay, um, they're trying to do it on top of TSM. Okay, Taiwan Semiconductor, and they're doing it in TSMY because when they applied for it, they changed their verbiage to the SEC and say. We're going to use options, but in addition to synthetic long and weekly covered call strategy, which is a naked call, we may want to do uh, spreads and collars and a few other sophisticated options, you know, techniques to keep income. And what a spread would do for a fund like this it would allow you to gain some of the upside and your loss is limited to how much you paid for the spreads. So I'll do a whole video on just walking you through a call spread, how they work, giving you an example. So, but we may see a hybrid. And so Jay in an interview just the other day talked a little bit about it and said, well, we got it we got it set on TSMY, but the first deployment of any options on TSMY were just a synthetic and and a covered call strategy, which is the naked weekly. But at any point in time, they can change how they write it. The existing single stock funds can't do that. They have to reapply. And the fact that they were able to get that through on TSMY means that they're going to do it on all the future single stock funds. But they're going to have to reapply for the existing inventory of 20-something stocks that didn't have that verbiage. So just FYI in education for you guys. Okay, But I need to really drill down and do a detail so you can see it and show you examples. Because just telling you, for an option guy that's written spreads, they understand it. But the average person isn't going to understand the difference. But here's the significant benefit. The significant benefit is you're not going to get capped. And when you do, you have an alternative to get out of the cap. But you're probably not going to get as much yield. So now you have a fund that is going to pay you less in yield overall and have more upside in the underlying. Because remember I told you this story. This is important. When you have like Tesla, Tesla when it was launched, a little while into the launch, what was the overall market place for Tesla. Well, it was in the process of having finished going up 20-fold from 1999 to 2000, sorry, 2019 to 2021 from the low to the high. It went up 20 times. Well, guys, I got news for you. Look at NVIDIA. NVIDIA. When stocks make massive runs, what do they then do? They pull back and it can be ugly. I mean, look at NVIDIA. Now it's back up. It's bounced back up. But what did it went from 146 after the split to like 90 in that big pull down day, right? What is that percentage wise? It's huge. Okay. So it's like a 40%. So don't think that stocks don't do that when they have big, big runs. Now that doesn't say NVIDIA's done. But it wouldn't surprise me that it's right back up here around 130 and that it goes back to 90 and maybe goes to 70 in the next, you know, downturn. And then maybe ultimately back to 150 or 160. I'm talking a year or two. But I think it's done tripling in the course of the years. But that's the stock market. That's reality. Okay. Things don't do massive spikes. And it's very unusual when you have a market cap that big to do that big of moves, okay? Here they are, one of the largest market cap countries. But think how much they lost in market cap, how many billions, probably close to a trillion from going from 146. The minute they were 146, the minute they were 90, 
they probably went from three trillion to two trillion. I didn't I didn't do the math, but you, you get what I'm saying. So this trading idea to me has some merits. Now, one could say, what about the weeklies? They're very popular now in Round Hill. But why not take what Round Hill is doing with the indexes and do that on a on, on an, another stock? Now I'm trading in and out of the day. Now, not all stocks have daily options. That's the problem, right? The indexes are big enough and sufficient enough that you have with volume that you have dailies. That's why a QDTE, an XDTE, and an NASDAQ 100, and on the S&P 500, and soon to be on the Russell RDTE, can write these dailies, okay? But maybe that's where it's going. Based on what I see in the market and where we are now in this debt cycle, this similar to the 70s and stagflation and all of the geopolitical and, and war cycle events, I think this is going to become a trader's market. I think this growth investing is going to not do nearly as well. So, you know, these... You know, when you get a 35% return in an S&P in a year, and that's just a flat return if all you did was bought the index, you know, that doesn't sustain itself. Don't project out over the next 15 years, I'm going to get 35%. Because guess what? You're going to get 35%. Maybe next year you get a minus 11. And the following year you get 4%. And then you get a 11%, then you get a minus five. Those are what actually happen. So when you get a cycle of three or four or five years together in a super cycle, it's not very likely that it's going to maintain itself. That's just reality. You know, I remember way back in the 70s when I first was starting to invest in homes and get into real estate. I was young and bought my first place. I remember the realtors in that era were saying, well, real estate on average goes up 5% a year. And you look back to 20 years before, and most of the time that's what it did. But I, I mean, I remember buying my first place, holding it for seven years, and it barely went up. And then when I sold that and I bought another, the next year it was up 55%. So I sold it myself to save realtor fees. And I flipped into a bigger house that was being built. And by the time I moved into that bigger house, it was up 70%. And somebody said, well, you should just sell it. And I said, well, why would I sell my residence? That's my residence. This isn't an investment. Well, guess what? Five years later, I sold it and I only made 10% on it. So absolutely, had I just been a trader in that. So what I'm saying to you is this is becoming whether you, you don't have to day trade. That's what I'm telling you. You people that are retired or don't want to spend the time or you have wealth, I get it. But I'm telling you, based on the volatility and what all I'm seeing, I see a pretty big, ugly September coming. 10, 15%. I think we go lower than those August 5th and 6th bottoms. It's just what I see, okay? So I have some plans on what I'm going to do to capitalize on that. But this topic led on a rant. Some of you are going to love it and some of you are going, Bruce, you know, just tell me about Misty. Well, just fast forward, guys, until I go. So now I'm back in here, but I needed to get all that out and just say that. All right, let's finish up on Misty. So... What are they doing? They're at 77% on this guy, all right? But it's, it's so small, I, I don't blame him for not taking off the table. See this key one? It's only 50%, so I can't say to them, take it off the table, take it off the table, because it's possible that it just closes below and they buy it for 11 cents, so I don't blame them for that. There's no issue there. All right, let's get through, I told you. Look at the new one. It's nice to see when you write one, and the stock does what it needs to do, you're already 25%. Now, granted, super small, not a lot of money, but I like it. I'll tell you what I would do. If this thing is nowhere near, if it's below 140 on Monday or Tuesday of next week, and you can buy it back for 25,000 and you got 80, take it off the table and rewrite another one out till Friday. Don't just limp along doing nothing. And that goes back to why I was doing that diatribe and that long rant about 
the volatility in the market, and it's going to get worse, way worse with vo the volatility. I know people are going to go, yeah, but the premiums go up. Well, but if you're not trading it and you're not being active and you're not taking advantage of it and you're just writing a script-based weekly call, you're going to get killed more often than not. Okay, guys, um, let me give you the final on payouts. So here we are. 46 million, you know, we took a tiny bit off the table, nothing you'd even notice. These numbers are almost identical. And then we collected a little bit of money here. So that's where we are. Unfortunately, Misty needs a lot, right? Its lowest payout is $1.94. And I know you all don't want to see it below a dollar. I don't, I'm not saying it's going to be below a dollar, but they may only pay a dollar. They haven't earned a dollar, right? They've earned nothing. They've lost a dollar 46. So, and guess what? That assumes we win and don't go above 138. Because if we go 139, 140, 141, we've lost the 8 million in this number right here. If we go to 141, we've lost the 8 million. And then we lost a little bit more in the, in the, in the, in the 140 and the 138.5, although they're not a huge amount of money. So we need it this week to go to 138 and stay, and they need, they've need they written a 148, great. They need to then on Friday, which is tomorrow, write some 149s. It all depends on where it is, right? And get revenue and get it far enough out that you can actually do something. Because if you want that synthetic to run, it could run and wipe this whole thing out. But you're going to lose it all on the weekly. So anyway, that, that, that's where I am on the revenue, guys. It's, it's, it's not pretty here. I expect the markets to hold up through the end of 830. But September opens Pandora's box. Man, oh man, do I see a lot of things in September where we may just get crushed in the market. All right, guys, that's what I got for you. Uh, it's not always the best news, but it's honest news. Anybody that tells you, you know, they're doubling down, great. I hope I'm proven wrong. I, I really, really do. But if you want my opinion, that's what it is at the moment. Okay, guys, Bruce with Targeted Wealth Creation signing out. Again, not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. This is for fun and entertainment and a little ranting. Hope you enjoyed. Okay, bye, guys.